Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com and welcome to a 30 for 30 Lightroom head-to-head -head raw edit. I've got Adam here right now, but if you want to play along at home, go to fronosphoto.com slash LR3030. Not only can you download this raw file that we're about to edit, but you can get a free trial of Lightroom so you can play along with us. Adam, you ready to get going? Let's do it. All right, here we go. What do we have? A picture. Oh, this is a cool picture. This is very photojournalistic. I mean, you have to time this perfectly, and she's actually pretty sharp for going through. Look, you can't rip on the person. You can't say, like, it's not sharp. That's one of the first things I look for is, is it sharp? But you can see, let me go back to my view options, because I want to see what it was taken with. Uh, I can do that. I can just hit the I button instead, because I already have it set. 1 30th of a second at 4.5 ISO 100, so it's pretty darn slow right there. But look, you've got a piece of glass, a piece of glass, and the train is moving. This is pretty good. I think I know what direction I want to go with this. I want to boomify it. Who didn't know I was going to say that? Doesn't mean I'm always going to do that. Let's see how, the, ooh, I love what it just did. Did you see that? Let me do that one more time. We go from linear, watch what happens to the colors around her. Boom, it just tightened it up. For me, that's what I like. You may not like it, but that's the cool thing about editing raw files is you can play with them yourself and see what works best for you, especially this, because you can download it over on the website. All right, let's keep going. I want to focus, not make it more focused. See, is this, what is this white spot? Is this to train itself? Let's see if a crop is in order, a creative crop or just a regular crop. Now, what do I mean by creative crop? Creative crop means if you have something that you want to turn into, say, a panorama, you could then unclick the uh, button right here, and you can get creative with it and do something like that. I like to keep the original aspect ratio personally, but if you're doing something like a pano, you can sit there and get creative with it. In this case, I don't want to be creative. I mean, I like being creative, but I want to stay with the original aspect ratio, which I've now locked. Hold on. Let me go back to the original, boom. We'll keep it locked. Yes. All right. Oh, I still have a little bit of the white down at the bottom. There, I got rid of that. But do I like this or do I like the original better? This. You still know it's a train. I'm really torn between this, and you have to be very careful when you crop things. Like I said, I personally don't like to crop my own work. When you have a lot more megapixels, you can do that, but what happens is you start to show the grain more, especially in low light situations, and you make that grain more prevalent, which then could make your image not so good. But I'm gonna go with this. I like the color. You gotta remember, you're in a subway station or something like that. I'm gonna stick with the color here. Black levels going. We already have that going. We got that going. Let's see. You can pump up that vibrance just a little bit. Be careful with the saturation because look what happens to her skin. Saturation is one of those things that when you have inanimate objects, you can blow them up in terms of the saturation. With people, they're going to get all yellow and jaundicey. You don't want that to happen. Get that back to zero. I'm going to see if I honestly like this crop still or not. Oops, don't want to cancel that, don't want to get rid of that. I want to go back to the original, as shot, and there we have that. Hmm, hmm. I'm going to keep it like this. I'm just going to stick with my gut on this one. What else could we see here that would work? Yeah, I want to brighten that up a little bit. Highlights, highlights aren't doing too much here. I'm gonna go with that. I actually like her ghosting out a little bit because the train is moving, and so I feel like, and when I say by ghosting, you see how the shadows, you bring them down, it's more prevalent, and then boom, it's like a little more hazy because it's kind of ghosty because of the movement, the 30th of a second, the train moving. Great shot, though. Really nice shot. Don't want it too yellow, but don't want it too warm, uh, too blue on that case. And, oh yeah, I'm gonna make it like this. Do that, 
Again, I'm playing with the HSL. You got your luminance. You have your hues. You can just see all the different things. I'm a big fan of telling you guys, if you see something and you don't know what it does, go ahead, click it, play with it. You could always undo it and go back to where you were right before. But this is the way that you learn how everything happened, the cause and effect. If I change this, this is going to happen. If I change that, that's going to happen. So we've got that going back to the top. Let me go black and white real quick. I'm going to go ahead and stick with the color. There's something, I want it to be more vibrant though. There, there is something to be said for the more vibrant like that. And I just want to get rid of the yellow just a little bit, make it still just enough. And I think I'm going to go with something like that. I want to see this full screen. I'm going to go ahead and hit F so I can see the full screen and I can see the image That's a striking image. It looks pretty good. I, I, I still want to do some more stuff. I really do. But seeing it full screen is something that's important. Yeah, I want to tighten it up. There's just, yeah, because it's dark. You have to remember, you're in a subway. I think I'm going to call it a day because I want to see what Adam's doing to it. I also want to end up seeing what you guys do because I love that I get to see your raw edits when you go ahead and post them. I'm going to leave it at this. Very interesting file that you can take many different ways. I used the crop. I hit that full screen button so I could see it full screen just like this. That's a good thing to do just to get everything out of the way, especially when I'm working on a 15 inch screen. I want to see it full screen so I can see if I missed anything as I go around. So I'm going to leave it at that. Let's see what the other edits look like. All right, here we go. Oh, cool. I like that a lot. It's interesting the way that this was shot. It almost looks like it was shot in a long aspect ratio. So um, that, that could mean a little crappie crop, crappie von crop. Um, you can actually see that there is, right in here, there is the actual door of whatever this subway or train type is. But the white is so like non, it doesn't really contribute much to this, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, I'm also going to probably boost up like you know some clarity and you know really get her to pop because she's a little bit soft over there, um, and we, we might go black and white you know as well as a color. So let's just get into this thing. Let's first start with the edit. I don't want to start cropping it until I get the edit underway. So um, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to add some contrast right away. I mean just even that, you know, boom, we're done. Let's go home. Um, that definitely adds a lot of uh, a lot of interest there. And we'll just bring our blacks in there. I like that a lot. I think we're getting somewhere. I'm going to boost some clarity. Now, as you can see, we've done this. We've lost a little bit of the impact of that, shoo, that kind of swoosh, but we haven't lost it completely. And, you know, sometimes you can get really married to what, like, your raw digital, you know, your raw file looks like and just think, like, that's the image. But there's so much that happens in the editing process. So sometimes you just have to go with it, which we're going to do today. All right. Um, that's pretty cool. I'm just going to give it a little, little bit warmer. Just a couple clicks on the white balance over there like that. And, um, you know, let's just see. I don't know if I love what's going on in this panel of frame. Let's just see if we can give, give this thing a little bit of a crop. Maybe get rid of it up to there so that it's kind of symmetrical to that side. Even though it's more centered on this window, I don't mind if it's a little heavy to one side. Actually, we could center it on that window completely and see what that looks like. Boom. Using the R key to quickly get in out of the cropping module, I still am not sold on this bottom bit over here. Um, let me just see what we can do about that. There's a couple of different things we can do. Okay, so you know what, let's just crop in there. What I can do is I can also, I can get rid of this. What, what I have is the cropping set to lock in the um, aspect ratio. So I can unlock that puppy right there and I can just manually make this crop, and I can do kind of like a pano crop like that. Let's just see what that looks like. That's kind of interesting. Let me just bring that up a little bit. I'm still not crazy about that bottom edge. Mm, I think we need that, so I'm going to undo that last little bit over there. That's kind of interesting. Um, I can live with that to some degree. You know, let me just let me just see what's going on here. The thing is, like, she's not, she's not sharp. So, how much attention do we want to draw to her? Well, let's just keep playing with this for a little bit. You know, I'm going to bring my whites up. Um, that's a little bit better. We'll split the difference. And bring highlights. We don't really need to play with those. Blacks, I'm going to bring those down a little bit. Contrast is good. Bring up some clarity. 
something like that. Yeah, maybe a wake a little bit warmer, not too much. That's kind of cool. All right. Um, let's just see, I'm going to just leave this as a color for right now. Make a quick snapshot. That was Command N. Let's just go black and white. I'll get rid of that down here. We'll go V. V for black and white, and now we can really even punch it up a little bit more. Boom, give it all that contrast. Boom, give it more clarity, something like that. And uh, to me, that adds a little bit more interest. Now, let's just undo this crop and uh, bring that bottom back into the, the, the image like that. See what that does. You know, it's just interesting. That, that white panel down there just doesn't do it for me. So I'm just going to hit the Apple Z or Command Z, and that undoes that undoes that last action. And, you know, I don't really mind that this is going to be kind of a long, skinny crop. I think that the, the information is in that bit, and I still think you get the sense that this is a moving train or moving whatever it might be. So I'm going to make this my black and white, B-dubs, boom. And I've got the color, and I've got the black and white, and that's my edit. All right, so I have Adam's file on my computer. He has my file on his, and we are going to reveal them to everybody more so us right now. We ready? Ready. Three, two, one, and go. Whoa. Oh, you did multiple edits. Yeah. I can tell you right off the bat, I like my color better than yours. Boom. <laughs> yours, you has, yours has like kind of like an old filmy look about it, you know? You went like a cross-processing kind of look? Yeah, so I sat here and I was like, I want to go for a cross-processing <laughs> look. <laughs> I know you didn't. No, I didn't. I like this black and white. You went with a create. I talked about creative cropping. Yeah. In my video, I was like, oh, you could do a creative crop. And it looks like you went ahead and did a creative crop, and that worked out really well. I tried to keep mine symmetrical, but I, I don't mind that you did yours a little bit kind of skewed. Did you do like a four-thirds crop on yours? No, I think this is the proper aspect ratio. Okay. I believe that's what I stuck with. Yep. I and actually unlocked the aspect ratio on the cropping tool and just brought that white bit up from the bottom. Right, and I, I talked about that too, because you, obviously you didn't see mine and I didn't see yours, but I talked about doing the unlocking it and then showing it. Uh, I'm going to look at your color here. Your color looks good. I, I just like, between yours and mine, I went more with, I don't know, it just looks thicker to me. And again, personal preference on all of this stuff, I edit one way, Adam edits another way, you edit another way, and that's the cool thing about editing all your files. I think it looks a lot more realistic. Yeah. Um, I think that it, uh, it pops a lot more. I think the skin tones look better. I think your white balance is better. I definitely am much more of a fan of your, your color than my color. And, and between your color and black and white, I think the black and white blows it out of the water. 100% agree. The black and white looks yeah. great. Any way you slice it, it's not overpowered. And I, it doesn't need to be a lot of contrast. And I remember this when I was editing mine. I'm like, I want it to be a little more ghosty, but not too far off, you know, too yeah. far hazy. But that's the point is you're, you're shooting through a pane of glass and it, looks, and it looks good the way it is. Yep. So I think that's about it. Yeah. That's what do you guys think? Who do you think won this one? Me, Adam, <laughs> you? It doesn't matter. Whoever wins, it's not about winning or losing. It's about how you play the game. And that's what it's all about. If you want to play along, head over to fronosphoto.com slash LR3030. You can download this DNG file as well as others from this 30 for 30. And if you don't have Lightroom, don't worry. You can download a free trial of it right now over on the site so that you can play with this file and share your edits with the world. And that's where we'll leave it. Jared, polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.